Hi guys, welcome to the variation in population size. So in terms of the learning objectives, you need to be able to describe the factors that determine the size of population, describe the abiotic factors that affect the size of the population, and explain how each of those factors can influence population size. Um, Any time now they could ask you to work out the population graph, you need to uh, take into consideration the sum of births and migration, take away the number of deaths and immigration. But when they would like you to work out the percentage population growth rate in the given time, we need to do the population change during that time and the divided by the population at the start of the period multiplied by 100. So nothing else than you're just looking at the uh, percentage increase. So this is the specification, okay? So we're looking at the size uh, of the population uh, and definitions that we need to be aware of. What it's a size, it's a number of individuals. Density, it's the number of individuals per unit area. And the growth rate is a change in number of individuals per unit of time. So the population growth curve has a characteristic uh, stages here, which is lack and log and the depth. So um, what is the lag phase? It's the low growth rate, okay? And there's no environmental resistance at that point. Log then, it's the growth rate at the maximum. There's no limiting factors. For example, there is no competition and the birth rate is higher than death rate. And the carrying capacity, uh, so carrying capacity, it's here, the, uh, uh, the, when the, uh, our graph levels off here, it's at the point when the number of births equals the number of deaths. So the environmental resistance, for example, uh, competition, it's present. And this is the maximum size of the population, which is stable. Uh, so what is then actually this current capacity? So it's the maximum stable population size of the species that an ecosystem can support and it varies as a result of both abiotic and biotic factors. So a slight changes in the environmental conditions obviously will change the carrying capacity slightly. So population increases uh, when there is not competition, factors uh, become limiting, for example, uh, what could happen in this uh, in this point. So if the, there is a limiting factor like uh, light intensity, obviously photosynthesis is not going to take place or there is not water. OK, so no photolysis, not water for, to be transported by xylem and so on. That will lead to the decrease in that population. And in terms of the competitions, we've got intraspecific and interspecific. So intra is within the same species. Okay. So if there is a smaller population, there obviously will be less competition within the species of the same uh, population. So here we've got the question that shows you a, a typical population growth curve and uh, questions around this. Ah, explain why a log scale is used. So typical question for this uh, part. So this is because the large range, okay, uh, the, or the difference or the increase in number has been uh, produced on that graph. And many yeast cells die in the death phase and suggest one reason. So um, we, we, I've given you example with the plants, so it could be no water, it uh, could be um, not light. But in here, what's the limiting uh, limiting factor? OK, they were looking at the at the yeast. So, for example, could be not glucose, OK, no oxygen for uh, respiration, OK, or increase in the ethanol carbon dioxide. So that could cause death. And plotting the growth curve, okay, uh, it's possible when the population grows in size slowly over the period of time. But it's then impossible when population grows in size really rapidly over a short period of time. And the numbers in the population, obviously, it's then plotted against the time. And remember, the current capacity is the maximum size of the population. 
Right, and then finally the factors that could influence the size of the population, temperature, light, pH, water, and uh, we could think about many of those. So uh, how do they actually affect? So abiotic factors, when they are ideal for species, for example, the ideal temperature for metabolic re reactions, no use of as much energy maintaining their body temperature. So more energy for growth and reproduction. So population size will increase. But when then they are not ideal, they will be lower or higher temperature than optimum. Okay, they will then use a lot of more energy to maintain right body temperature so there will be less energy available for growth and reproduction so eventually the population size will decrease okay and few examples here so going to look at the enzymes for example so enzymes okay remember they will denature at the really high temperatures so Increasing the temperature will decrease the population size because obviously the enzymes will denature. And you can combine many factors like this as long as you refer to this manner. Right, so that's everything for the variation in population size. See you later.